welcome to this third tutorial in the project panel series for Premiere Pro and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at a few of the preferences and we're going to look at bin structure and bin options bins are basically folders where you organize your footage so we're going to be looking at preferences and how to organize your footage so that you can easily find it okay so what have I got so far I've got a new project I've got my first sequence and I've imported a single image this is the image of Dunstanborough Castle up in the northeast of England um, and I got this image from Photolia here's the image uh, from photolia.co.uk an image by Gail Johnson that I bought from Photolia um, I can recommend Photolia for good images pictures videos vectors at a reasonable price um, so I've brought this image in now I imported it in the normal way by double clicking in the space here and then finding the image and clicking open and then it came now it came in with default settings so if I now take that image and I drag it and drop it on my timeline down here in my sequence you'll see that firstly it's five seconds long but also you'll notice that in my source panel I see the whole picture but in my program panel I don't see the whole image and in fact the only way to see the image is to select the image to go to my effects controls to open up motion and then starting to play with the scale pulling it down until it fits in and and as it's not the same aspect ratio as the uh, sequence I'm using I either cut off the top or the bottom a bit or I end up with bars at the side um, and that's the way I can make it fit however there are options that can make it fit directly let's take this back to 100% so you can see what I mean okay so that's how it came up first of all now if I go to my preferences now on a Mac it would be under the Premiere Pro menu and the Premiere Pro preferences but for a PC it's edit preferences and we're just going to go to the general tab and look at just a few of these options um, firstly let me show you some of these transition options because these are quite important if you bring in lots of different bits of footage onto your timeline and you want to add transitions those transitions have default values and generally speaking they default to about one second now I'm on a PAL system phase alternating line European which is 25 frames a second so therefore my video transition default duration is 25 frames or one second and you can see that the audio default is also to one second if you're on an NTSC or a, a US machine you really want this at 30 frames a second also I've got still image default duration and if you remember I said that the image itself stayed in for five seconds well that's where this is set up but it's set up in frames so 5 times 25 is 125 frames 5 times 30 would be 150 frames if you're on the NTSC machine okay so those are just default durations the reason you can change these is that you might want to have much shorter durations with an awful lot of footage so if you, rather than having to adjust every single one as you bring them in you set a default value up here and then everything you bring in after you've changed these values and clicked OK will be the new duration that you've set up so let's just for instance change this to 75 frames so that's three seconds and then there's one other item I want to show you just down here it says default scale to frame size if you check this box it's going to take any image that you bring in and try and make it fit within the frame size that you have available so as you can see at the moment it doesn't fit now it should try and fit so we'll click that one at the moment that's all I'm going to show you for now we'll come back and have a look at the bins a bit later but let's click OK and now has it changed let's bring in another copy of this to our timeline and drop it in and move our current time indicator across well it hasn't made any change it's still going on for five seconds even though we changed it to three and it hasn't changed its fitting it, it's exactly the same that's because I brought in this item before I changed my preferences if I bring in another copy now that I have changed my preferences it will fit so let's do that let's double click find our Dunstable Castle and click open and it brings in another copy of the same image and if I drag and drop that on my timeline first thing you can see is it's much shorter if I drag my CTI over the top it tries to fit it in now because it's not the same aspect ratio as my actual production it's got black lines at the side so once again I probably have to go into my effects controls open up effects controls and probably play with scale to make it fit better um, it depends which works best for you but at least you know you can change these so fit your project 
but notice that it only affects footage brought in after the changes. Footage brought into your project panel before the changes will remain as it was originally brought in. OK, I'm going to delete both of those. And now we're going to talk about bin structure. And I'm going to delete this second copy here. OK, what are bins? Well, bins are found down here. Or you can go to File, New, Bin. Same difference. This is a new bin. Actually, as you can see from the icon, a new bin is really a new folder. But the reason they use the word bin goes back to the olden days when video editing was done with real hard media, with actual strips of film. And on the editing floor you would have lots of bins, actual physical bins, with all these uh, strips of film dangling over the edge relating to the individual shots that were taken. And then the editor would physically go to the bin for the shot that he was working on, take out that strip of footage, and then take it and work on it and, um, and move that way. So that's where the word bin comes from. They're using the parlance of the olden days editing, whereas these days in virtually every other program you would really call it a folder. But they're still called bins, which is, well, quaint, really. Now, bins or folders are a way of organising your footage so that you can quickly find it. As you can appreciate, a project panel will fill up with footage and assets really, really quickly, particularly if you're working on a long or a complex project. And you need to be able to navigate to your footage very fast so that you can find exactly what you want with the minimum number of steps. And the best way to do that is to organise it into a very clear bin structure. So let's just create a few bins and I'll show you what would be a simple structure that maybe you could use. Let's click on the icon for a new bin, a new bin is created, and let's call this one Sequences. Because the first thing you want to do is put all your sequences, and you will probably create multiple sequences, into one folder. If I just click away, and then I can take my sequence and I can drop it into the bin, and there it is, nested if you like, inside that bin. By using this twirl you can see what's in and what's not in. Now if you've put it into the wrong bin, don't worry, because you can simply grab hold of it and pull it out and let go, and now it's not nested in there anymore. So if you put footage into the wrong bin, it doesn't matter. You can just move it around as you like, just by simply dragging and dropping it out. But let's put that one back into the sequences for now. And there it is inside. Now, what else would I want to bring in here? Obviously, I'd want to bring in a bin for footage. There's a bin for footage. But footage might come in lots of different forms. I might have multiple cameras. So I, if I have multiple cameras, I click on the footage bin so that it's highlighted click a new bin and call this cam1. Click away. Now cam1 bin is nested inside of the footage bin. And I might then have cam2, cam3, cam4 or however many cameras are involved in your shoot depending on how complicated it is. Now what if you've already got a series of assets already in a folder somewhere else on your system already organized to bring into your project panel? Well don't worry you can bring those in as whole folders. So let me show you. Double click and navigate to a bin. So here I have my pics bin, or folder with all my pictures that I want to use in my production. I can simply select it, and at the bottom of the import window, you'll see there is the import folder option. It'll be in a slightly different place on the Mac, but it should still be there. Click import folder, and there's my pics folder with all my pics already inside it. And I actually know that I've also got um, an audio one there as well. So I can just click on audio, rather than having to double click and choosing them all and bring them in, Simply click on the folder, click Import Folder, and it drags and drops it in as a new bin with all the items inside of it. And so you can create quite a lot of them. And now that I've brought in all my picks, just out of interest, they will all reflect the changes that I've made to my preferences. So if I drag in this Dunstan Castle and drop it in, you'll see it's three seconds long and it tries to fit, whereas the original one I brought in before anything else and drop it in, that's still five seconds long and doesn't scale to frame just so that you know what's going on there. OK, so you can bring in as many bins as you like. The other bin that you might want to add in there that's really important is titles. And if I was creating titles, I'd probably have at least three. I'd have a selecting the bin and then clicking New Bin. I would have Intro, Lower Thirds, and I would also have Final Credits. And those would be where I create all my different titles. And so you've got this series of bins. Um, and if you've got something that's been brought in but is the same name, say I've got Dunstable Castle here, but is under a different set of preferences to this one, you can just click on it, rename it, and call it Long. 
and there you go and now that's done and I can bring that into my picks bin and I've got Dunstanborough Castle and Dunstanborough Castle long and I will know that they're different and now when I pass this project on to someone else I've got my bin structure it's very easy for them to navigate through and see what's in there and how it's all organized so that they can quickly find the assets that I've used and any assets that are available however there are some other options for creating bits and pieces say I want to create a whole series of titles in a title bin so I can open up my title bins and let's say I want to do all my intro titles I can select the intro titles but every time I create another title it wants to go back to another folder but I want them all to be in this bin and I just want to create them and drop in that bin without worrying about it if you double click the bin it opens it as a window as a floating window and now any titles that I create so if I go down here new title and call it whatever you want click OK blah 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 put it all in there hit return it's all done title ones already in that bin and it's going to continue to produce them in this bin as long as this bin is open so that's how you would open a bin as a floating window there are some other options um, I could for example hold the control or the command key while I'm clicking on this bin so control on PC or command on Mac double click and it actually opens it in the same panel but it's gone up a few layers so if you notice here you've got this return this this little button for navigating backwards I've opened up my intro titles as a folder open in this space and I have to navigate back up so that's my titles bin and navigate back up again to get back to my main structure so you can say control or command double click and that will open up the folder in place however that might not work very well for you because you don't like to navigate up and down so if you hold the alt on PC or option on Mac and double click what you do is you open it up in a new tab so I've still got my original bin structure here this is a little scroll bar on top in case you can't find what you're looking for if you've got too many things open but here I have my bin structure and then I've got my intro bin as a separate one and as long as that's highlighted and I create my new items here so I create my new title title 2 click OK I'm not going to put anything in it but if I just click OK again you see title 2 is created in there and I can just click another tab to go back to my original bin structure and move around and then if I open up my intro there are my titles and there they are separately so you've got three options you can either double click to open it in a floating window control or command double click to open it in place and then you have to navigate back up or alt double click to get a new tab for that individual folder and then you can create things quickly and drag them in so let's just do one more thing let's open up footage let's open up cam one let's double click on that so it's a floating window double click in the import space and then we can actually go back to a project and there's some footage and we can just let's take in three items those three items click OK and they're imported in here I can shut that down knowing full well that if I now open cam one here there are all the three bits of footage that I've brought in in addition to this I can actually go back to my preferences and if you notice at the bottom of general you have the option to change that behavior so I've said if you double click a bin it opens in a new window if it's control or command click it opens in place and if you auto option click opens on the new tab you can change that behavior to suit your system these are just the default ones that Premiere Pro comes with and they seem to work fine for me okay one last thing if you have created a bin structure that works well for you then what you can do is you can clear out the footage that you've got in here simply by clicking it and shift clicking top and bottom and hitting delete to get rid of it and you can just get rid of all that footage you can clear out all the footage so that you just end up with a bin structure that works for you and your projects and then what you can do is file save as and you can save it as I've called it bin structure template or bin template might be quicker let's just call it bin template and you click save now the bin template you would then open for the next project that you have there's nothing in there and immediately you do file save as the name of your new project and then you've saved the bin template to use at a separate time so if you have a bin structure that works you can make these these can become actually very complicated or quite quite detailed um, structure trees depending on the type of project that you're working on an excellent way to do it is just to clear out the footage uh, when you've finished everything else save the structure as a bin template project 
and then have that project to open and then immediately save as the name of your new project and you've got all your bins immediately available. Well, I hope you found this useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Thank you.